So it's 120 euro a year to tax. You get discounted rates on toll roads. You get an eight year battery warranty, a five year unlimited car warranty, and there's no benefit in kind as the car is worth less than 50,000 euros. Hello and welcome back to the Dundee YouTube channel. Today we're reviewing the Hyundai Kona. Now it's not just any Hyundai Kona. If you notice, there is no air intake there and that's because this is the Hyundai Kona Electric. Now to start with, last year we actually reviewed the base model, the one liter petrol, and it was fantastic, a really impressive little car. So I was very excited to get behind the wheels of the electric one and it has not disappointed. Now its main competitor is the Nissan Leaf. Last year, believe it or not, in 2019, they sold the exact same number of Nissan Leafs as Hyundai Kona Electrics. So it's certainly going to be an interesting review. So make sure to hit the thumbs up, subscribe. But for now, we're gonna check out the boot space. Before we open up the boot and delve deeper into our Hyundai Kona Electric review, I think it's worth talking about how much it costs to buy one. Well, prices start at 39,230. This includes metallic paint. It also includes your 5,000 euro SEAI grant, 5,000 euro VRT rebate, and the residual VRT of 1,126, very kindly paid by Hyundai themselves. However, it doesn't include delivery costs, which in and around usually add up to about a thousand euro depending on the car. So you're talking 40,000 euro-ish to get you inside one. Now, speaking of inside one, let's check out the boot. So when you open the boot, you have 332 liters. To compare that to the Leaf, it's about 100 liters less, despite it looking a little bit larger as a car. Now the seats do fall down in a 60-40 split, and the boot is quite practical. So as you can see, there's literally no load lip. You've got some storage in here. As you open up under here, you can see there's kind of different storage. If you remember in the last kind of review, we put our laptop in some of them. It's, it's a nice way to kind of hide things should you park in a public car park. And under here, you've places for your charging cables and you also have here a puncture repair kit. It's not a spare wheel. Instead, you can just reinflate the tire. It's not ideal, but it is pretty decent and it means you're not gonna be left on the side of the road. The rear doors open nice and wide, which is gonna make getting that child seat in very easy. And what's more is the ice fix points are super easily accessible. Now, as you sit in being an adult, it's quite spacious. I'm five foot 10 and a half and I have loads of knee room, decent headroom. And what's more is on a lot of electric cars, the floor tends to be quite raised, but here in the Kona electric, it's actually more or less identical to the ordinary Kona. You've got a nice armrest that has a good quality feel to it with two drink holders. You've got some storage in here, another drink holder in the side. It's really comfortable and I could easily see myself going 449 kilometers, which ironically is the range of the Kona Electric. Now, as you sit in to the helm of the Kona Electric, and you hit the on button, you get a little jingle. Almost to say, welcome to the future. And that futuristic feel continues here with this center console. It is a very nice addition to the Kona. In fact, when I drove the petrol version, I thought the interior was ever so slightly dull, but this has sprucened it up. And what's more is in the new 2020 version, you have a 10 and a quarter inch screen, which certainly livens things up in here. So now let's talk about functionality and in terms of storage, things like that. Beginning with the glove box, you've got a nice spacious one there. You've got a big center console there. In fact, it's really large. You've got your usual cup holders down here, more cup holders in the middle, and a little bit of storage there. You've also got wireless charging, which is really cool. That is very handy. It also has your USB point to connect to the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Another really impressive feature is there's not only heated seats as standard, but also a heated steering wheel as standard in all Kona electrics. I commend you for that one. Now, the infotainment system. So the infotainment system, much like a lot of cars, it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And as long as any infotainment system has that, it gets a blue tick in my book. So basically you turn it on, your phone's connected. As you can see then, you've got all your apps, you've got your Google Maps, you've got everything it's nice it's intuitive and it works now it does obviously have its own inbuilt system it's got the radio it's got its phone so you can connect 
by Bluetooth if you don't have your wire for the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So all in all, it's a good infotainment system. And I think once that new 10 and a quarter inch screen comes, it's gonna look absolutely unreal. One additional thing that the Kona Electric has in its infotainment system that your ordinary Kona won't have is it has EV. So what this is, is managing your electric vehicle. So you can see you've got your battery percentage. You can put it into settings like winter mode. And what's more is it has charge management. So this is basically limiting the charge. So generally you might only charge it to 80% as opposed to 100% as it can be better for the batteries. Or you can make sure to charge schedule it. So it's a very sophisticated system that's really impressive. Now to drive the Kona Electric. So first things first, it's no longer a gear knob, instead it's buttons. So you select the drive button and off we go. Now to give you some facts and figures of how it drives, it's front wheel drive, it's got quite a lot of power, 204 horsepower. That does not to 100 kilometers an hour in roughly 7.6 seconds, if you can put down the power, because it is quite a lot of torque, 395 newton meters of torque. So the front wheels will spin should you just plant it. Now, as it drives, comparing it to the Leaf, I personally think it drives better. I've read some reviews that people think it doesn't drive as well. It's a little bit stiffer. However, it's a lot more engaging as a driving vehicle. I found the Leaf, you're kind of almost a passenger, if that makes sense. Whereas this, you definitely feel in charge. Now, other things about it that are quite interesting to drive. We spoke particularly in the Leaf review about regenerative braking. This is the big thing about electric cars. So regenerative braking is effectively using the motors to create power and also to slow down. So this has three options. Number one is actually nothing. It's just normal. It drives like a normal car. Anyone old fashioned will really like that. But then these flappy paddles here, you can engage the different levels of regenerative braking. And actually, if you go up to level three, you can feel it really slam on the brakes. Now, it's not quite as good as the Leaf where it will actually be one pedal driving and completely stop to a halt, but it's very impressive. And I like having the control here on the flappy paddles. Now let's talk about the range because this is always the elephant in the room when it comes to electric cars. However, it's not an elephant in this room as the Kona Electric is notoriously known for having an extremely large range, 449 kilometers claimed. And believe it or not, obviously your average is maybe gonna be less, but there is stories and videos of people actually going even further than that on an eco run. So the range is not an issue if you think about it. How often do you really drive more than 400, let's say 400 kilometers in one sitting? Very, very rarely. And the fast charger can actually charge 80% in 54 minutes. Your slower charger is about nine hours to get 100%. But if you have a charger at home, that's not really an issue. You just plug it in overnight and voila, you're fully charged the next morning. So I think when the range is as big as over 400 kilometers, it's not really a worry. In fact, most petrol cars won't even do 440 kilometers or 450 kilometers on a single tank. So is it actually an issue? It's completely up to you. I feel like if you're watching an electric kind of review, you've already accepted that the electric car is for you. Just like every car review, we talk about three of our least favorite and three of our favorite things about each car. So number one on our least favorite things about the Hyundai Kona, is we've got this fan noise. Now I suspect that's either to cool or heat up the batteries. However, you can hear it inside the cabin and it's quite loud. Number two on the dislikes, and I mentioned this earlier when I was driving about putting down the power. Being front wheel drive and having that much torque, when you put your foot down, because it's so instant, you actually get a bit of wheel spin. Don't know if you can really feel it, but it's almost like torque steer in a fast front wheel drive petrol car. And number three, and I know this is nitpicking and it's completely subjective, but these wheels, I get what they're going for, that kind of futuristic look. However, I'm not a massive fan. I just think maybe a little bit less spokage would look a little bit better. Now, number one on our favorite things about the Hyundai Kona Electric is this secret little passageway through here. 
It actually also has a USB point and a 12 volt socket and it's a nice little additional space for storage. Number two on our favorite things about the Kona Electric is the benefits of owning one. So it's 120 euro a year to tax. You get discounted rates on toll roads. You get an eight year battery warranty, a five year unlimited car warranty, and there's no benefit in kind as the car is worth less than 50,000 euros. And number three is the driving age that the Kona has. And it's worth mentioning, even in the standard entry level petrol one, it has these as well. And it's really, really impressive. So number one is when you put it in reverse, all cars come with a reversing camera as standard. Now the next driving aid I will have to show you on the motorway, so we'll rejoin you then. We're on the motorway now, and the big kind of standout performance of any Hyundai is actually their lane assist. Now I know I always talk about lane assist and say how much it impresses me, but the Hyundais have it on a whole other level. They're nearly on Tesla's level, so you press that button down there, and if you combine it with the cruise control, it's nearly autonomous driving. It's not quite, and I wouldn't trust it, but it will really take the bends. It doesn't just bounce off the double yellow lines or off the center lines. It will actually take a nice, smooth corner. Well, there you have it. That is Dundee's review of the Hyundai Kona Electric. All in all, an absolutely brilliant car, really impressive. And it gives us a glimpse into the future at affordable prices instead of a Tesla or an e-tron or a Jaguar I-Pace. This is for real world people that can go on a long range. So it's very impressive. So thank you very much to Mooney's Honda for supplying us the car. Thank you to you for watching the video. If you've enjoyed it, leave us a comment what your thoughts are on electric cars, if you've ever owned one, if you consider buying one. But for now, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.